So many mixed feelings with the Florida Keys. <laughs> I, I wanted Marissa to throw up at this point. So. Come on, let's get back to the boat. Come on. That was not, unfortunately, the experience we got. Florida Keys is highly overrated unless you go fish and dive only. You definitely got stuff crawling out of this water sometimes. Yeah, whoa is right, buddy. I'll be getting scary. <laughs> the bugs are, they're no joke. They know every, every spot, every nook and cranny. We're Marissa, Nathan, Hensley, and JJ. We sold our house in 2015 and moved into an RV full time to live a life of less junk, more journey. Life is a journey. Let go and get going. What's up, fellow journeyers? So man, the Florida Keys. So many mixed feelings with the Florida Keys. <laughs> because I don't know, there's so many, we had our own perceptions and idea of how it would go or why we could or why we couldn't go there. Maybe you're thinking, wow, could I ever go to the Florida Keys? But let's be honest, when it comes to the Keys, there's a lot of stuff that's not on the way to anywhere. <laughs> and there's a lot of hurdles, a lot of restrictions, and a lot of myths uh, that we feel like have to do with the Keys. The first of which, since we've gotten into our spot here at John Pennecamp, and we stayed in Pennecamp last year as well, the state park, uh, might be, well, like, there's nowhere to stay. And really, the there's nowhere to stay myth, maybe we should go back to the wind. <laughs> there's like some wind. <laughs> is there wind in the Keys? Can you get blown around even on the bridges on the Keys? Yes. But as far as finding somewhere to stay, um, that's pretty easy to squash. There are, there are places to stay in the Keys. There's all kinds of different parks. There's all kinds of state parks, private parks. And now I think there is some truth to is it tough to find a place to stay that's affordable. Now that probably is a somewhat true statement. Like, uh, we stayed in Sunshine Key last year, $180 a night. It was a beautiful RV resort. Uh, and we'll tell you kind of how we hacked that. We actually only paid $20 a night for that. For some of you, if you want to get into the Keys, buying the Trails Collection to get into the Keys can be worth it almost by itself. Because the resorts you're getting into with these discounts, like I said, they're usually 140, 160, 180 bucks a night. You get in there for 20 bucks a night with Trails Collection, which I think is like 320-ish a year or something like that right now to add on to your thousand trails package. So it's one of those yearly membership fees to get into the whole membership discussion. But just know that some of those memberships, you look into them, they can be good. But there are spots even in these state parks and they can be found through cancellations even if you don't book 11 months out. This site next to us, I mean, it's been sitting here for four nights empty. I don't have an answer. I don't know what's going on. I do know almost every night there's several sites empty. So I do know people do cancel. People don't show up. If you're willing to move around, if you're willing to look for those cancellations, there are sites, even in these state parks like this, where it's, it's 36 bucks a night here. I think I just heard something behind me. I'm on full alert. There's some pretty decent size iguanas around here. <laughs> they just come out and hang out at your site. Even comes with like a GoPro attachment. That's kind of cool. So maybe one myth or one concern you might have about the keys is like, how am I going to get mail or can you get mail at all? I don't know that you can ship your mail to the state parks, but I had a shipment shipped to the UPS store. It's like five minutes down the road. For the most part, the keys, it's not like you're in the middle of nowhere. So you can still get, I think it took two days, maybe three days for Amazon to ship these uh, snorkeling masks, which we needed uh, for where we're going today, which is snorkeling. Oh, oh, yeah. We're super excited to be going out with some patrons on Team Journey who also have a blog, Narrow Road Journeys, and it's always exciting to get to do these excursions with our friends. Wow. Oh. So one thing that's new is you're supposed to bring your own snorkels. Do they still provide the mask and stuff, I guess? Just yeah, a snorkel? Yeah, just, just a snorkel you have to bring on your own or buy. It's not included with oh, the rental anymore the rental? Because, of, because of COVID. Uh, but the price went down, right? No. <laughs> no. Okay. We need help from mom or dad. Okay. Thanks. That's it? Yeah. yeah. Get yours on. Just get to give you a hug. She's getting hers on like a glove here. Me. <laughs> 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 All right, I'll stop. Thank you. Big step, okay? You got this. Ready? Thank you. Uh, welcome aboard Sundiver 3. My name is Mike. We're going to be your crew today. We're going to be taking you out to a coral reef.
Some of the things we do are completely magical. Like snorkeling in the Florida Keys sounds really magical, right? And it was for a lot of people on the boat. I heard them coming in talking about all the things that they saw in the ocean. But um, yeah, that, that was not, <laughs> unfortunately, the experience we got. Um, it was tough with, with our little, with our littles being dropped off in the middle of an ocean with huge waves. And I mean, we don't with all this want to come across as divas, but like you need to know when you plan an excursion, this is what, 225 bucks-ish? Mm -hmm. I guess we played, paid for, for this. For our family of four. For this, like, um, things don't aren't always going to go the way you plan. So several things made the snorkeling tough. First <laughs> was that JJ did not nap. It was during his nap time pretty much. We throw on the boat. He's not falling asleep. He's already screaming on the way there. We get to where we're supposed to snorkel. And the second thing that made it tough, the yeah. swells were, were big. Well, if if you get seasick, <laughs> I can't even be in the truck without getting car sick. So, like, being on the sea with big swells was, yeah, it was pretty intense. <laughs> so, Marissa's sick within 30 <laughs> seconds of us stopping the boat. Like, Rocking like, all over that ocean. She's about to throw up. She can't think straight. Like, I'm having to, you know, I'm trying to handle both kids. Uh, well, we're thinking, hey, we just need to get in the water. Once we get in the water, everybody won't be sick. They'll be seeing cool things, and it'll all be better, but... But yeah. yeah, so finally, I'm finally, I'm like, we're, we're the last ones in the water, right? So finally, Marissa does get in the water, and like, I don't know if it really helped or not, and I, I finally get Hensley in the water, and Hensley Ooh. sees a jellyfish. Hey, what's the matter? Come on, let's get back to the boat, come on. You don't, you don't want to go back to the boat? And so the whole time she's screaming jellyfish, jellyfish, and then there, there were, there were jellyfish. But the people on the boat are like, oh, you just, you don't bother them, they won't bother you, which I don't know where they heard that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm telling his list, I'm like, oh, it'll be okay, they won't, they won't bother us. So, but the whole time she's screaming bloody murder about these jellyfish. And I'm like, okay, if you're that scared, let's go back to the boat. But she doesn't want to go back to the boat. She wants to see things. Oh, yeah. But she's boat, scared to be that's out. Right. It's right. Uh-oh. I took that off to put the code in at the gate at the state park. The other problem, the third or fourth problem, I don't know how many problems this is, but like uh, the boat, they anchored it pretty far away from where you wanted to swim. And, but we couldn't get any of the kids to go far enough to see we anything. We couldn't even get to the reef. So we never even saw, <laughs> I think Hensley and I never saw anything but seaweed and, and jellyfish. And the, the other family we were with, they never even saw jellyfish. They, you never saw anything, did you either? I saw some underwater plants and one fish okay. about this big. It was an experience. I think one of the myths or maybe one of the complaints about the Keys is it could be super touristy and I think it definitely can be touristy. I don't know, the snorkeling yesterday, I was looking around and I, I ran into this comment. I think it's on TripAdvisor, I think, but this, this is kind of what I know I felt about the Keys in the past. Florida Keys is highly overrated unless you go fish and dive only. Everything is expensive and a lot of business is just a tourist trap. If you go to the Keys to enjoy the beach, there are no sandy beaches in the Keys, just coral reefs. Florida has a lot of other places slash beaches that are worth your time and money. Yeah, some of that at some angle could be considered true, but we don't at all think everything is touristy. We don't at all think there are no beaches. We'll show you guys how that's not true. Uh, and we don't at all think that it's not worth coming to and enjoying. One of the really cool things to do in John Pennycant State Park is they have trails on the water. So you can go through mangroves, you can rent kayaks, you can get out on your paddle boards, and that is what we're going to do.
So like two minutes down the road, you can actually walk over here too, but we're not walking with the boards. <laughs> you can walk to this launch spot. This is not a big beach area, but going back to the whole myth thing, like that is a beach area over there. There's like two or three beach areas for this park. Pretty good sized beach area over there that you can access from within Penny Camp. So pretty cool. Ready, weren't you, bud? Wow, look at the manatee, buddy. Say manatee, yeah. There he is. Wow. Oh, wow, there's two more right here. There he is. There he is. Wow, there he is. Woo! Hey, buddy. Hey, bud. Made it to the beach. The beach area is incredible here. Look at this. Over in that area over there is where we saw the manatees. We saw more on our paddle boarding experience this morning than we did on our snorkel trip yesterday. We saw a couple nurse sharks, jellyfish, fish, manatees. So we're gonna go out and see what we can uh, see out here hopefully we can just see some stuff so they have a mock shipwreck here and I've heard it's pretty cool I'm here with Leah mom's day <laughs> oh. so she is a full-time mom as well and this is how you escape for the day for the hour for the 30 minutes you get so let's go see a shipwreck and some big fish One of the concerns or maybe one of the myths um, with the Florida Keys could be that groceries are more expensive. What do you think about the groceries uh, in the Keys? How, how bad has that been price-wise or finding what you need or? I think that the groceries are pretty similar. We usually do our shopping at Publix in Florida. And so I have seen that prices are pretty consistent. I mean, it's not a significant change for sure. I mean, we're spending maybe a little bit more, but not, not anything to get defer you from coming to the Keys because it's incredible. Now, if you want to take the time, and we don't usually have the time, but if you're looking for like the, the side of the road where they're selling produce mm. or fruit or um, seafood, there are definitely ways to get things actually a little cheaper in the Keys and certain things if you're willing to go outside the box and look for those things. But for us Publix, yeah. um, like this is a receipt. Maybe some of you guys that know Publix can look at this and know if this is like, it's got a list of all of our stuff. Is there anything on here that's really weird? I don't know what we bought that day. <laughs> oh, I mean, I got taco stuff and a key lime pie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> I mean, the avocados were five for five. Tostitos, that's pretty, yeah, right. There's some Tostitos, right? Uh, that was the taco two. tortillas. So two for five, right? Um, yeah. Pretty similar, I would Gotta say. have my t taco tortillas. So if you're worried about groceries or maybe you're like an Aldi fan or you always go to a certain place, you could, you could shop before you go and then come down, spend a week, and then shop when you get back. But if you're down here longer than a week and you need to shop down here and get groceries, I don't think the groceries are something to freak out about, right? No. Oh, and there's like, when she says Publix, I mean, there's like, I don't know how many Publix. There, there's some in Key West, there's some in Marathon, there's some in Key Largo. I mean, they're like, they're within 30 minutes of pretty much anywhere you're at in the Keys as far as a Publix. Is that, that's a digger? Digger. Yeah, a digger. This is Hensley, she told me she built a fifth wheel. <laughs> Apparently it's a front bunk room though. I guess this is mommy and daddy's room way back here. What you got, buddy? Wow, thank you. He just likes to hand me things all the time. What's, am I supposed to do something with this? You want him up here? Is that the bald pirate? Arr, what's a pirate say? Um. 
So what about Key West? We've heard that Key West is, well, we've talked about touristy, <laughs> but also uh, we've heard the words dangerous. We've heard not family friendly. For us, we've been to Key West twice now for like the sunset festivities or whatever you call them. It feels safe, it feels controlled. Is it like, you know, family friendly as in Disney family friendly? No, but you know, it's, it's also at the same time, I wouldn't consider it dangerous or super risque or anything like that. Are there crocodiles, alligators in this area? Yeah, it's Florida. <laughs> you know, they've got signs up anywhere. If you see water, there could be a crocodile or alligator. Have we ever seen a crocodile or alligator around here? No. <laughs> there are definitely parts of Florida we have. Uh, would I let my kid play near the water during dusk? No. Are there uh, crazy, huge, massive iguanas that crawl out of this swamp area over here? The answer to that would be yes. You definitely got stuff crawling out of this water sometimes. Whoa. Yeah, whoa is right, buddy. Check that out. Wow, check him out. Oh, wow. <laughs> JJ. Oh, there's another one coming out. They're coming out of the woodwork today, babe. Might be getting scary. Picking over. <laughs> We've seen like five of these today. So when it comes to crocodiles, alligators in the Keys, yeah, they have the signs, they're around, but for the most part, we don't see them. When it comes to the iguanas, we see them, but not too afraid of them. When it comes to the bugs in the Keys, and specifically John Pennekamp State Park, the bug problems are legit. The bugs are, they're no joke. Like, and if you're a person that bugs love you, I think I'm one of those people, like they go to town on me. All right, there's, there's some bug bites. <laughs> we got some leg shots on the bug bites. Oh, we got some more bug bites over here. <laughs> like they are. I don't know how personal you want to get, but I'm just going to say they know ever. Every spot, every nook and cranny, a bug will find it. So I feel like I am bit head to toe. Now for the most part, and the ones that are the worst, honestly, it's not the mosquitoes. It's like the noceums or like these little gnat looking things you can barely see. Spray kind of works. Yeah. I don't know, anyways, there's different tactics you can use and it varies on how bad the bugs are. Last year in Pinnacamp, the bugs weren't as bad. The wind was blowing stronger, mm. but then we couldn't get out on the water. This year we can get on the water, <laughs> but like then the bugs are super bad. So you have to kind of pick your poison. Just be proactive. I feel like when you're in Florida, you have to start every day with some kind of bug repair and some sunscreen because it's just it's just a given it's don't too wait. late it's too late <laughs> and that's what's bad about these bites too they don't the mosquito stuff itches sometimes 30 minutes maybe one day at the most like these they could itch what for weeks seems I like haven't, right i haven't for slept in two nights yeah i it's, do it's have bad. a cream that does help this i literally leave at my bedside <laughs> as you can tell we're like this is an after the fact we're, thing. this yeah, is not for tag no this, this is like after bite cream and as you can tell I've went to town <laughs> on this cream. It's almost gone because I am trying not to scratch because I literally have scars from Florida two years ago from the no -seums because I scratched so bad. So there definitely can be questions, concerns about the keys. For us, it's been well worth it. It's a fantastic experience as an RVer. It's well worth the drive. And uh, we're here this year. We've been here before and we will be back. If you want to learn more about Florida and RVing in Florida, you can check out our Florida travel playlist that we will link to. Keys have been awesome for us. I'm sure if you come down as an RVer, it can be awesome for you as well. Until next video, let go, get going.